This was the all important clash in the C pool of the FIDE Grand Prix 2022 Belgrade leg. The fifth round of the event, both Vidit and Richard Rapport on two and a half points apiece. Whoever wins this game would have great chances of making it to the semi-finals. If it's a draw, then they would both have the same number of points. Let's start with the game. Vidit had the white pieces and opened the game with 1e4. Vidit had three white pieces until now in this tournament and he played two games with e4 and one game with d4, which is surprising because d4 is one of Vidit's main repertoire moves. It was the French defense that Rapport chose, which clearly showed that he wanted a fighting game of chess, d4, d5, and with it also played the advanced variation, which results in complex games, c5, c3, and now came queen b6, knight to f3, and knight c6 would lead to the main lines now. But bishop d7 is the second most popular move here. Your plan is to put the bishop on b5 and to exchange it for the f1 bishop. With it developed, bishop e2. And here, uh, Rapport took on d4. Now, this move has its repercussions. Because once you take, I take back, my knight gets the square on c3 to develop, which is the most natural square for itself. However, if you don't take and you play bishop b5, then I can play the move c4. And now let's say I, if you take with the bishop, pawn, it's a kind of a pawn sacrifice and I play d5 and this position is quite interesting. And I think Rapport didn't want to go into uh, such positions. So he took, took and now strategically a great exchange. But you know, always in chess, Strategic ideas need to be backed up with concrete variations and tactically they should be sound. This is what was maybe not happening here because after take, take knight to c3, white is getting quite ahead in development. Okay, a better move would have been a3 trying to go knight c3 because when with it went knight c3, Black could have gone bishop b4 and here it seems like let's say after bishop d2 I can take take and this uh, is a position where black is doing fine. Um, mainly you can go for the move a5 because then after a4 you put your queen in and you will see that as compared to the game this is a much superior version. The point being that white is not able to play the move b4 on time so this move a5 actually is a very nice move clamping down the queen side. Queen a6 played by Rapport turned out to be not a good move. Now with it had a couple of options here. One is knight e2 with the idea of castles and you know uh, moving on. Um, but he played the move a4 and actually I like this move a lot. Because he is preparing knight to b5. The knight would be an absolute monster here looking at c7, d6 and so on. So pinning it was the correct decision by Rapport. Bishop d2. And now, of course, if you play knight c6, that's just a mistake. Knight to b5 and white is winning. Bishop c3, bishop c3. And now uh, you see that it's not easy to prevent the move b4. Rapport played knight e7 over here. Maybe knight c6 could have been slightly more accurate because then if I go b4, then queen c4 and I'm instantly hitting the pawn here and the bishop. But knight e7 and now came the move b4, uh, threatening to gain more space with b5. So queen went to c4. And now with it played his rook to c1. So already it was starting to get slightly uh, difficult for black. Because after knight c6, which was actually a big, big mistake. And not so easy to figure out why it is a mistake. So I will ask you to pause here and try to figure out what is the best move for white. Try to think, try to... Uh, look at it deeply. I think it's a beautiful exercise. Okay, so the first 
move that comes to mind is b5 but that's not a good idea because of knight b4 uh, and here knight d3 check is threatened if you take on b4 i'll take back with a check <clears throat> so that's not a good idea so the right move here is knight d2 attacking the queen and notice how if you go to queen a2 rook a1 traps the queen so you have to go to d3 this is what with it would have calculated and now another important moment try to think what should white do here yes the right move here is b5 and you might ask to yourself how does this move work because this pawn is hanging so my question once again is pause the video and figure out what is the move here for white i think this is the move that Vidit would have missed, also Rapport would have missed, and I think any player can miss such a move. The right idea here is the stunning h4. Because you are making space for the rook to come here to attack the queen which defends the knight, and the knight would then hang. The knight cannot go back because the pawn protects it, and if it were to go to f5, then it blocks the queen's path and rook h3 would trap the queen. That's how difficult the situation is for black. He's actually lost. Vidit would have won the game. Uh, and on the other hand, let's say if you, after knight d2, queen d3, b5, if you have to play a move like knight d8, that's already very passive. I go h4, rook h3, attack this, white is clearly better. So this tactical idea with knight d2, b5 and h4 is what Vidit missed. Uh, not easy by any means bishop d2 was played in the game uh, which is also good second most uh, best move in the position queen d3 and now offering a queen trade very nice move because if you were to take king takes this is clear advantage i'll go b5 i might enter the seventh rank i would double up the rooks great position for white queen a3 was played and here with it uh, had to find another good move and actually this is a moment where it's not so easy to find what should white do you can think a bit and try to figure out what white should be doing here so it's a it's a moment to understand that what black wants is to put pressure on d4 with both his knights so this is the moment to strike he has one attack you have one defense you you are in control so b5 and it's a very natural move and I'm sure Vidit thought about it. But what he might have not liked is knight a5. The point being that you can't pick the knight because now c1 is hanging. And if you don't take it, then the next move, the knight comes to c4. And this is one of the things that a player like Vidit sometimes misassesses because strategically c4 is such a nice outpost. But... If you look at concretely, now the knight is hanging, right? If you play now knight c4, then I come with an attack on your queen. Let's say you go to b2. I come with an attack on your queen once again. You have to go to c2. Now I attack your queen once again. Now two options. One is to go back here or to e4 or to go to b2. Let's say if you go back to b2, then after queen d3, you're already in, in some big trouble. I'm threatening bishop c3 to trap your queen. And if you were to take this, then of course, what was the point of getting the knight there, you know? The other option is queen g6, but then after knight h4, once again, the queen is trapped uh, and you lose a piece. Take, take, and this. So the other option is queen e4 but after i take take rook c4 e takes f3 rook c7 very important move not letting black consolidate with knight d5 and now after b6 i can go uh, a5 and black white is getting a lot of play in the position so here if you look at it Castles by Vidit slightly slow because now Rapport started to attack with knight f5. Uh, the d4 pawn is under pressure. 
and now once again b5 could have been opted giving up material playing queen g4 hoping for some kind of a play here so here's my question to you what should black play in this position it's a very uh, nice one and you can think about it so the most natural move that comes to your mind would be knight f5 because it saves the knight also defends the pawn but after bishop b4 white is in driver's seat after queen a4 rook c7 he's getting all his pieces in and if you were to take on b5 i double up and with the king not being able to castle this is disastrous the right move here and kudos if you found it is queen d3 brilliant brilliant move um actually very difficult to find attacking the bishop but you would ask yourself what if queen g7 well i give a check king h1 and now the move is very very pretty and you take on c1 allowing queen h8 king d7 you can take the rook but here you get checkmated so that's how queen d3 is a beautiful move very nice tactic and uh, perhaps with it did not like it um, and so he didn't play b5 he decided to defend this with bishop c3 there was another possible move which was queen d1 very very little trick tricky move knight d4 knight d4 knight d4 and now uh, you play the move rook e1 and basically let's say if you were to castle then i go rook e3 and your queen is in trouble now you know it's going to get kind of trapped also this knight bishop e1 um it's it's getting very tense let's say you try to save your knight then rook e2 and already the queen is getting trapped now uh, with something like rook a1 and the queen is gone so this queen d1 with the idea of rook e1 rook e3 was also very nice because you control the a4 pawn uh, again not an easy move to find for humans but with it had a chance to keep his advantage he played the most natural move bishop c3 but here richard rapport again found a beautiful move black to play what would you do so if you were to play something like castles then this is the victory for white with b5 he's able to push him back then maybe he might also push him back with g4 um, so you have to figure out a way to tactically keep the threats going now if you were to take queen takes a4 that's not going to solve your problem because after b5 the knight anyway has to move the right move here is rook c8 well kudos if you were able to find it because now you are putting pressure down the c file and if b5 then now knight takes d4 knight takes d4 knight takes d4 and then c1 would be hanging here with the rook so you can't play b5 so with it went g4 here very interesting move with it said to himself that okay if he takes here i take here that's just winning there was a tactical possibility to take with this knight now two moves one is knight takes then you take back with the knight bishop takes rook c1 oops rook c1 queen b5 check rook has to go back or you can move the king queen b7 with a complicated position uh, should most likely end in a draw the other option is to first only take on d4, rook c1, g takes f5 and once again this position is around equal. So Vidit was angling for this when he went g4 but Rapport seeing that Vidit has less time and also wanting to keep the fight on goes knight f e7 and I think rightly so Rapport has no reasons to agree to a draw the position suddenly starts looking a little bit overextended for white that he has pushed so much so many pawns he has space but also weaknesses bishop d2 and now it's your time to think for black what should black do in this position try to think carefully the move here and very nicely played by richard is h5 you know 
hey, you might think that you need to castle to get this rook into the game, but h5 just solves the problems. Uh, if you go g5, I get the f5 square. So with it, took on h5, but after queen takes a4, rook a1, the queen manages to get back to this side of the board. b5, knight d8. Yes, black is getting a bit passive, but as I mentioned, the rook is being active from here. So you don't need to actually connect the two parts of the board. Rook takes c8. Here, actually, knight h4 would have been nice because after the queen trade coming back and this would be around equal this position. So rook c8, knight c8 and rook to c1 was played. Now knight to b6 in the position, rook c7, rook takes h5, bishop b4 and knight d7. This could have been a better way for black to play, but Richard went knight to e7. And I think this is where Vidit made his final error. He should have played bishop b4, getting rid of this knight, which is very pesky. It could come to f5. It could also come to g6 after the h5 pawn goes. So let's say queen h5 or rook h5. You just chop it off and you are doing quite okay in this position as white. But the moment Vidit played rook, e, rook c7, he simply missed that rook h5 is such a powerful move because you could think of queen h5 but here white has a strong move which is bishop g5 attacking the knight and if you play knight f5 there is rook c8 putting pressure on d8 uh, but rook h5 this move uh, now allowed after bishop b4 first of all it stopped bishop g5 because now you can take it and after bishop b4, knight came to g6, coming to f4. And the entire position is disintegrating here. b6 was kind of a uh, final attempt by Vidit to, to get some play. And also if you were to play a6, then queen d1 with the idea of queen a4 could start getting a bit nasty here. So that's the reason why Rapport gave a check. Queen e1 is sort of forced because if you go king g2, you lose the queen to knight f4 check. Uh, so here takes takes and a b6 and if you count the number of pawns with it is two pawns down without much compensation Rapport actually converted this position quite well um, It was pretty easy for him He gave up one pawn But uh, then assumed control of the position the d4 pawn is weak He won that he took another pawn here on h4 and uh, yeah, takes with three extra pawns. This was already over. Few more moves were played. Black kind of consolidated himself. <coughs> and here, 97. The bishop is hanging with it resigned. So, with this win, actually, the scorecard in uh, this section has now turned into Richard Rapport's favor. He's on three and a half points. Vidit is on two and a half. Alex Zishirov is on two. Fedosiev is on two because Shirov beat Fedosiev. The final round sees Shirov versus Rapport and Fedosiev versus Vidit. If Vidit manages to win and Shirov manages to beat Rapport, we will see a tie break. But otherwise, it seems like Richard Rapport is going through to the semi-finals. After a great start for Vidit in this tournament with two out of two, he lost two games to Richard Rapport and that is what made the difference. For now, this is all a great learning. Uh, I hope you liked the game. I thought there were some br brilliant tactics in it. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section below. This is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.